I get asked all the time to do reviews of Bloody K logs, and almost every single time I see similar mistakes that greatly impact performance. Playing a Bloody K in Cataclysm is certainly not rocket science, but if you are someone who feels like they should be performing better than they are, then it's likely that you're making at least one out of these five mistakes, and luckily they're very easy to rectify. And with that, here are the five most common Bloody K mistakes and how to fix them. I don't care whether you are doing green parses or regularly parse 99, almost every single log that I've ever reviewed uses this one spell incorrectly. The three most common mistakes I see is 1. Simply not using the spell, 2. Macroing it into Heart Strike, and 3. Only using it to reapply Bone Shield. While macroing it into Heart Strike is certainly better than not using it at all, it's a very suboptimal way to use it and using Blood Tap to reapply Bone Shield is certainly a fine use case, but more of an old crap solution wanting to use Bone Shield as a defensive cooldown. So, how should you use it? Well, there are two criteria that should be fulfilled before you choose to press Blood Tap. 1. You should only have one Death Rune available. This is achieved by getting a Runic Empowerment proc when you use the Rune Strike, while every Death Rune is recharging. Two you should have at least one blood rune on cooldown. This means that even if you get a runic empowerment proc, but you have both blood runes available, you should first use your heart strike before using blood tap in order to instantly reset the cooldown of that rune. The only exception to that rule would be on Sinestra in phase 3, where you have incredibly fast recharge times and generally prioritize using death strikes and rune strikes, or if you desperately need to use the death strike in order to survive. Remember that Blood Tap is not on a global cooldown, so bind it to something that's easy to press without big finger movements. I personally have it bound to scroll down on my mouse. Simply using this spell correctly will reduce the amount of empty globals and increase your death strikes per minute greatly. Look, this is not the first time I'm talking about the opener on this YouTube channel, but I still see so many people messing up their opener and fixing it will increase your overall DPS by a huge amount. Your opener in 99% of circumstances will always look the same, so really hammer in the sequence and spend some time at a practice dummy in order to get it right. Here is how to most optimally press your buttons during the opener. Put up Bone Shield at at least 30 seconds before pull, use Army 7 seconds before the pull, Horn of Winter right after Army, then use a Strength Potion right before you engage the boss. After that, use the following opener sequence. Taunt, Death Strike, Heart Strike, Dancing Room Open Macro with Slam Springs and Racial if applicable, Outbreak, Death Strike, Heart Strike, Death Strike, Heart Strike, Empowered Room Open. Death Strike, Heart Strike, Death Strike, Rune Strike. If that Rune Strike gives you a Runic Empowerment proc, use Blood Tap and Death Strike. If no proc, then use another Heart Strike. At this point, you'll have a few seconds left before your potion wears off and hopefully some trinket procs in order to use your race dead. Race that can also be used earlier if you're playing Troll in order to snapshot it with your racial bonus. At this point, we go into our normal rotation. If you want more information about your rotation and snapshotting, I have a lot more information about it in my Blood DK Damage Guide I released a while ago. So check that out if you haven't already. My tip for really nailing this opener and to be able to pull it off without even thinking about it is to take a screenshot of the video right now. Have that picture on a second monitor while trying to nail it on a dummy. After you've done that a few times, close your eyes and try to memorize the sequence in your head. After that, do it on the dummy again, but without the picture on the second screen. Do all that, and I can guarantee you'll be smoking the rest of the DPS in your group during the opener. Unlike most classes, we have to track two types of resources as Death Knights. Our runes, sure, but also our runic power, and frankly, the latter often tends to be overlooked. Ideally, we'd like to have our runic power as high as possible without overcapping our runic power too much. Hovering around the 100 runic power mark is ideal for several reasons. First, our Glyph of Death Strike boosts our damage by up to 40% based on how much runic power we have. Further, you don't want to be the guy who ends up missing a kick because you've completely depleted your runic power, or being unable to use your dancing rune weapon at an opportune time just because you use one too many rune strikes. Is there a case where it's worth going below 80 runic power or so? 
sure. But a lot of stars would have to align for that to be the case. So as a rule of thumb, try not to use Rune Strike unless you're at or above 100 runic power. Now, speaking of Rune Strike, it's not simply a matter of only paying attention to your runic power when you use it, but you also want to look at your runes as well. In addition to being decent damage, the main reason we use Rune Strike is to proc a runic empowerment in order to reset the cooldown of our runes. And runic empowerment can only refresh fully depleted runes. A rune is only fully depleted once both runes are on cooldown, meaning that if you have at least one blood rune, one frost rune, and one unholy rune off cooldown, then runic empowerment cannot proc. This means we always want to prioritize using death strike in order to put all of our death runes on cooldown before using rune strike, even if the runic power gained from that death strike will be over capping our runic power. The same does not apply for blood runes, as we'd ideally want to proc runic empowerment into our death runes. It surprises me that till this day, people are using Heart Strike way too much. From a defensive perspective, you'll obviously want to use as many death runes as possible for death strike since it's the only form of active mitigation you have. But from an offensive perspective, using death strike over heart strike on single target will always be worth it. Sure, if you want to squeeze out some extra damage on Klee fights like Council, but there aren't any real threat of you actually dying, then go ahead and use more heart strikes than you otherwise would. But in any other scenario, you should always prioritize using Death Strike. I suspect the reason why people are still using Death Runes to press Heart Strike is that they are not properly tracking their runes. Due to the way rune regeneration works in Cataclysm, you'll at times only have one Death Rune available with nothing else to press. And unless you're actively keeping track of your runes and runic power and just pressing what's ever available, you'll end up using more Heart Strikes than you should. Move your health bar, target bar, runic power bar, and runes to the middle of your screen to make it easier to track your resources and thus, in turn, play better. Simply fixing these five mistakes will take you from an okay Blood Death Knight to a really good one. Tons of more Blood Decay videos are on the way, and with Firelands around the corner, make sure to subscribe as to not miss the releases of the best in slot and boss guides. I'm currently streaming on Twitch every weekday for at least a few hours where we deep dive into tanking logs, clear raids, and generally just have a good time. Feel free to come by, drop a follow, and say hi. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, until next time.